Hey, what is up guys? So you want to use external hard drives as internal hard drives on Exponology, specifically TCRP. Now I am testing on 7.1.1. It should be the same for all of them based on what I'm seeing. The easiest way to do this, I'll just tell you right now, is to just do a rebuild of your uh, config file. How you do that, boot into the TCRP tiny pill loader, which is like the third option down, let it boot. You can either do it right there on the console if you have like a USB, uh, sorry, if you have a keyboard and monitor attached. Now, if you do not, or you have like a headless uh, setup, just get the IP address, SSH into that box, go to uh, your home directory, which you should be there automatically, edit your user underscore config.json, as you can see on the bottom left of my screen there. This is a normal step that you do just to view this file during the installation. If you wanted to verify, let's say your model number or your serial number or your PID and VID, all you're gonna do here is scroll down to that Sino info and your file may look, it probably does look different. Your, uh, your information will be a little bit different, but you're gonna scroll down to the Sin info section. You're going to update this to look like mine. So your internal port config is going to be zero X and then seven Fs. USB port config, 0x0, and then eSATA port config, 0x0. You're going to have to add the USB port config and add the eSATA port config. Now, the max disks you can leave at 16. That's fine. If you want to increase it, do that at your own risk. This is the easiest way. Just right, quit, save out of this. You're good to go. Now, if you have some weird configuration, you don't want to redo a build for some reason, you just want to change your configuration to recognize external hard disks or eSATA disks as internal hard disks. If that's what you want, it's going to be a little bit longer of a tutorial and we're going to get started right now. So what do you need? You need PuTTY. You need some type of way to move files in between two Linux boxes. I'm going to be using two Linux boxes. You could do it here on this box. I don't want to confuse things. I don't want to run out of space on uh, a couple of these partitions are limited on space. It's much easier just to move a file out of this box into a control environment where I can work and you can work. Um, so that's what I'm going to do and that's what I'm going to show. So that's why we need some type of way to move files in between boxes. I'm using WinSCP. I'm on a Windows box. Just very easy. If you don't want to use WinSCP, you don't have to. If you're more of a command line purist, that's fine. SCP is installed on TCRP. So you can see right there, you just need to type in that command. It's a lot easier for me to use WinSCP. Probably will be for you too. So we'll need those four things uh, at a minimum to get started. So what we're gonna do is jump over to our other Linux box and we're gonna install CPIO. It's a compression tool, uh, compression and extraction tool. Uh, and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do a quick sudo apt-get, update, hit enter. I'm already updated, or at least I should be. Maybe I wasn't. So there we go, there's some updates. And then we're gonna do a sudo apt-get install CPIO. Now I already do have it installed, so you can see it's gonna say you already have the newest version. That's wonderful. So now what we need to do is move a file from TCRP into the second Linux box. And as I mentioned, I'm gonna be using WinSCP. So you can see my two sessions here, .50, .58. is TCRP, .58 is my second Linux box. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start on the TCRP system. We're going to go to mount, or MNT for short for mount. We're gonna to go to SDB1, and we're gonna pull this rd.gz file. I have already saved it. I created a file on my local Windows box, and I just saved it as uh, rd.gz, right? So you can click the file if you're using WinSCP, click download, it will download it to your local PC. So now the file is on my local box, I can click that file, and I've created this directory, I can click upload, and it uploads it to that my test bed now. So uh, this is the same directory, I can do a quick ls, there's the file. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back over here, and I'm going to execute this command. Actually, just in one second, I want to create another directory. MKDIR unpacked. CD unpacked. We're going to paste that command now. You would need to change your your path here. Mine is you know home youngblood rd and then the date dash rd gz. Just update that path for your path, and then hit enter. 35,033 blocks. If we do a quick ls, there we go. There's the files. We essentially, if you guys are familiar, we essentially unzipped this, this package. So what do we need to do now? What we need to do now, we need to do cd sbin. I think this must be a sim link. I'm pretty sure it is actually. Once we're in sbin, we're going to do a sudo vi on init.post. 
Now what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down all the way to the bottom. We're going to see the underscore set underscore conf underscore kv entries, a bunch of them. So we can see all of those here. We need to edit. We don't have to edit all of them, but what we do want to edit, two entries of internal port config, which you can see at the first one highlighted here. So we're going to do an I for insert, one, two, three Fs. We're going to scroll down, one, two, three more Fs. And again, this is where you'd also edit max disks. So if you wanted to change max disk count to let's say 24 on 918 pluses or 920 pluses, I built a 918 plus. I think I put like 40 disks at once and it bricked. Like it wouldn't even boot into like, you know, welcome to Synology, enter your password and username and all of that. It, I got like a work detecting a problem so 16 is fine. Um, 16 doesn't mean that if your USB enumerates as device number 20, it won't find it. Mine enumerate as device 21 and 22, and I only have three total disks. I have an internal disk and then the two USB drives, and everything works fine. So it's three out of 16, not device number, max number 16. And that's from anecdotal evidence from what I've experienced uh, as a part of this experiment. So again, what you wanna do is just update that internal port config here, internal port config here. Those both point to different files. You can see one is Etsy Sino info, the other one's Etsy defaults, sinoinfo.conf. Once you have done that, click escape, click uh, type colon WQ, hit enter, and we are done with that file. Okay, so now we are in our unpacked working directory we have modified the file and now we just need to zip it back up into that sda1 or sdb1 uh, folder on our exponology tiny core red pill box so what we're going to do now is copy this command uh, this is important you have to put the full path in a different path than your working directory copy this over do it and if you remember the un uh, cpio uh, extraction was also i think thirty-five thousand and thirty-three blocks or right around there so if we do a cd.ls, cd, there's the original one. So we go to packed. So actually, let's real quick, ls minus ltr. So uh, 36964, let's just copy that real quick. cd packed, should be about the same. Doesn't have to be exactly. We did add some additional, actually it's a little smaller. That's interesting. Just the way the compression works, for some reason it's smaller. But it, you know, this does work. So now what we're gonna do is go back to winscp. We are going to, and again, you can ask CPDs over, but I'm gonna go back to the folder. I'm gonna go to pack. So save is my original one, right? So I'm gonna create a new directory, call it new, drill into that. So the pack file, and if you did, we're talking bytes difference, right? 17,517 is the same as the save, 17,517. Um, 1,024 bytes and a kilobyte. So being off by what, 50 or 75 or whatever, it's approximately the same size. So we know we're in the ballpark we're, we're in a good spot so again go back to new i'm gonna up uh sorry yes i'm gonna download this first because we're on the workbench so download it there and then we're gonna jump over to mount slash sdb1 and sdb1 is the is is the ram disk essentially your boot disk now before you go any further you could completely hose your box so take a backup of this file uh you cannot you cannot rename it here. If you rename it, you'll run out of space when you go to copy this and it just won't work. So what you have to do is download this somewhere, put it on the TCRP USB drive, do something with this that you know how to save this and back this up. The easiest way to do this would just be to change the properties on this file uh, to a read only on your Windows machine. Mark it, mark this directory as do not delete original rd.gz file. I know we're in a good spot. This is a test box for me. so. Let's see what happens. So we're going to right click on this. We're going to delete this file. Are you sure you want to? Yes, I am. We're going to go to new. We're going to upload this file. So now we have the file uploaded. We're going to jump back to our shell on the TCRP box. Do a quick LS. We're going to CD to that directory, MNT slash. And mine are SDB one, two, and three. Yours could be SDA, SDB, SDC, SDD. I should have said this earlier. Depending on how many USB drives you have, or sorry, how many drives you have will depend on that B, C, or D. So it'll be SDA or SDB minus B. I have two. I have an internal drive, and this USB drive is showing up as, as B. So now what we're going to do is a pseudo reboot. And you can't see it, but one thing you have to make sure that you do, and this is why it's good to have a keyboard and a mouse, is you need to make sure you're selecting, you're off-selecting TCRP 
tiny core image build is what it's called and you're going up and again i know you can't see this but i'm going back to red pill ds918 plus version 711 42962 usb verbose hit enter and that, that's just going to show that starting kernel with usb boot and i'm going to flip my monitor back to a different input back to my pc and we're back so now what we should be able to do is do a quick ping okay it looks like it's up so now I am on that IP address 192.168.1.50 port 5000. Log in. And we are getting volume or SSD cache of normal. So that's that's a good thing because I have the USB drives disconnected. So we can see here storage pool one. I had drive 17, drive 18, Sabrent, and a WDC. Insufficient number of drives. Well, if we go to HDD, we only have one drive. That's the internal drive. Let's go back to putty on your tiny core red pill box hit restart session re-accept the certificate login as and what we can do is just a quick uh, pseudo vi on etsy slash sino info and it was four f's before it should be seven now so fingers crossed do a slash port cfg and look at that port cfg esat is zero zero internal seven f's and USB port config zero zero. We are looking good, so let's do a oh, just a Q. Let's do the reboot. Okay, I have plugged in my USB hard drives. No guarantee that a raid's gonna come back up. I've rebuilt this two or three times. While that's booting, excuse the long beep, it's just enumerating those hard drives and and, and uh, seeing which one it needs to boot from. I'm using two old hard drives in two IDE SATA to USB. Uh, converters, right? Like if you if you wanted to swap some data from a new from an old laptop hard drive in your new laptop hard drive, you'd use one of these connectors. One of the hard drives does have smart issues; the other one does not. And um, I did have to purchase some new hardware. So for the people out there that maybe you're getting some value out of this video, you can just give me a quick like, maybe a comment. Hey, thanks a lot. I would appreciate. It. I'd spend a few bucks, you know, 150, 200 dollars on a uh, a little mini PC to do this testing. So I would greatly appreciate it. So the box should be up and running again. We just do a quick ping. Okay, we do have ping, so that's good. I hear the hard drive's doing something. So I can tell you right now that array is back online. That alarm didn't come up. That window is saying something's wrong, but it looks like we have a warning. So something. It's better than critical. So something's going on. So let's go over to storage manager so we can see our pool, volume two, volume one. So here we go. Yeah, so a partition did fail. That is actually the drive that, that has smart issues. I wonder if something happened or if it's, if it's just ultimately failing. Okay, here you can see the two drives, Sabre and HDD. That, it's, a, it's not a Sabre and HDD, it's a Sabre and Enclosure. And then the Western Digital, it does have some smart issues, as I mentioned. So if I go to Overview, Storage looks good, Create, Create Storage Pool, click Next. I just want to do JBOD, click Next. Both of those drives, I, I could do RAID 1, right? Essentially, it's going to be a bunch of wasted space. So you can see estimated space, 176 gigs. Again, this is just for to, to prove that this works. Please confirm you want to use this drive. Oh, that's interesting. Drive 18. So yeah, that's fine. I can delete it. It's an old volume. Skip the drive check. Click apply. Yes, I want to erase them. I can hear them clicking away. So we can see here storage pool 1, RAID, max size. USB volume 1 for the name. Click next. ButterFS. That sounds good. Click apply. And there we go. I now have two USB drives that I am using as internal hard drives. So I can use them in RAID or JBOT or whatever you guys whatever I need or whatever you guys need. I hope this was of value to you guys. That is it. If you have any questions, any problems, feel free to ask. I'm going to create one last video, which will be how to do this on Synology hardware. So if you have actual Synology hardware, that'll be the next video. With that said, thanks for watching. Any questions, feel free to ask. Take it easy.